Good morning, folks. We've got some terrific stories to hit today, including an incredible event in China, Space News, and Zarkova's folly comes full circle. We're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun presented a quiet, earth-facing half with a few minor motions around the limbs. You can see that the north is getting much more active than the south is, same as happened last sunspot cycle, and the ascent up the sunspot cycle curve continues. Quick look at the solar wind here. That is a proper coronal hole stream, nearly peaking out at 800 kilometers per second. However, the density component was not tremendous, and it took two days to hit this peak. That change was slow enough to allow the magnetism to have only minor instabilities, as it's not just about the magnitude of the event, but relative change in space weather conditions over time. For example, a mid-range solar flare might not even be noticeable at the zenith of sunspot maximum, but in the trough of sunspot minimum, it's likely the biggest space energy event of the year. Now let's go on to Earth weather and the hurricane has made landfall, is dissipating quickly. While a ton of moisture is going to continue on this track, bringing flash flood concerns, the main core has lost almost all of its gusto in terms of a churning tropical event. Moving on to China. We posted this on Facebook yesterday and the official story is that a high voltage wire was hit by lightning. That is the only explanation provided one recognizes there is no step leader down from the clouds, but rather this is more likely using the conductive pathway of the wire to create the earth discharge. We've seen more of these earth discharge events this summer than in my 10 years of doing this prior. And while high voltage wires are often hit by lightning, they don't usually do this. Initially, this appears quite plain to be another superbolt. Folks, I have my eyes on the Scientific Visualization Studio today. Last night, they had this graphic up for an animation page they had allegedly made that day, but it never went anywhere as a link, just a page not found. This morning, even the photo icon is gone, so hopefully they plan to post it today and not scrub the entire thing, because if you can't tell, this is going to be related to Earth's ongoing magnetic shift, just like the lightning. Interesting note up next here on the magnetic fields created by vehicles and urban areas like offices. Despite the engines and wires and people and cell phones, they are able to show how geomagnetic storm magnetic fields have more of an effect on your body than the rest. Skipping to the cosmos and we're combining two known features around plasma spheres in space. There's both the concentric disk like the Cladney plate and the Parker spiral of the plasma outflow. They are now imaging both at the same star. It required different wavelengths of light, and ALMA had the hard job of spotting the radio return of the swirling spiral. Now remember, radio waves in space require particles trapped in magnetic fields, so what does that tell us about these spirals? Indeed, they are where the magnetic fields are found, while the rings are more about resonance and even gravity. This should help at least part of the imagination in dealing with why the Parker spirals at stars and galactic levels deliver the magnetic reversals of the system for those orbiting bodies. Well, folks, I don't like the professor. She doesn't like me. Been that way since our email conversations five years ago about when the grand solar minimum would arrive. This paper here is her next draft and remixed version of a paper she already got published. I was extremely harsh on that paper, calling it a wolf in sheep's clothing, saying it was very bad science and our getting behind her timeline as a community would make the real grand solar minimum discussions appear to be foolish. She wrote an insulting letter to me, saying I was speaking nonsense and claiming that indeed 2020 would be the start of a 33-year or three-solar cycle grand minimum. Well, her paper was promptly retracted from the journal because the scientific community quickly noticed what I did, and sadly, they used it as a hit against the total grand solar minimum community, just as I feared. You'll know this if you try to discuss the grand minimum with others. They look at you like you're crazy. Alas, perhaps the weirdest part of this is she had to resubmit this entire thing just about a day ago on Archive, which means she should be able to look at the sun right now and see we are not descending into grand solar minimum, but we've got the solar magnetism producing exactly as expected here in the early rise of cycle 25. It should be obvious to everyone watching that sunspots aren't disappearing, they are just coming back, and we've got at least one more solar cycle to go. For the impatient, Yes, it is coming this century, but with Earth's magnetic field down around 20 to 25 percent, I am far more immediately concerned with the next five or six years of higher solar activity. 
the original reason why this channel exists. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.